When Rome marched into Scotland, it stopped. The reason? A people the Romans called the Picts, the Painted Ones. They built cities on mountaintops. They carved symbols no one could read. And then, they vanished. For centuries, theories swirled. Celts? Black Sea invaders? Something stranger? Archaeologists argued? Legends grew. Now, after more than a thousand years, science has cracked the case. DNA pulled from ancient graves reveals who the Picts really were, and the truth is nothing like the myths. If you have Scottish, Irish, or Welsh ancestry, especially in the US, you may be more connected to these vanished warriors than you think. By the end of this video, you'll see why the Picts never truly disappeared. To understand the Picts, you first have to see the world they ruled. This wasn't some empty wilderness. In the centuries after Rome pushed into Britain, much of Europe was sliding into chaos. But north of the River Forth, a powerful kingdom thrived. Its reach stretched from fertile lowlands to the rugged highlands, from bustling coastal trade posts to remote hillforts. Here, the land itself was their greatest ally. Towering mountains, dense forests, and boggy valleys turned every mile into a natural fortress. Roman legions trained for open battle, found themselves funneled into narrow passes, mired in marshes, and shadowed by warriors who could melt into the mist. And the Picts didn't just survive here, they flourished. Fortified hilltops gave entire communities warning of an enemy days before they arrived. They guarded trade routes, farmed rich valleys, fished the cold northern seas, and raised families in stone roundhouses warmed by peat fires. This was no loose collection of wild tribes. It was an organized society, fiercely adapted to the land and determined to defend it. And if you're new here, we explore mysteries like this all the time. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to Stone and Bone and join us as we uncover the hidden truths of the ancient world. When the Romans wrote about the Picts, they couldn't resist turning them into a living spectacle. They claimed these warriors charged into battle, wearing little more than chains around their necks and waists, their skin covered in twisting animals, sacred symbols, and swirling patterns. According to Roman accounts, it wasn't poverty. It was to show off their body art in full view. It's a striking image. But it's only part of the story. The Picts weren't just painted warriors slipping out of the mist. They were farmers metal workers, and traders with connections that reached across Europe. At sites like Rhiney, archaeologists have found French glass cups, Mediterranean wine jars, and silver jewelry as fine as anything in Rome itself. They also carved massive stone slabs covered in precise patterns, not random decoration, but marks many believe acted as clan symbols or family emblems, a visual language still not fully cracked today. And perhaps most telling of all, they were master planners. Their hill forts and settlements weren't scattered at random. They were placed to command rivers, valleys, and coasts. These were power centers for a kingdom every bit as ambitious and sophisticated as its neighbors to the south. And yet, for all their power, the Picts seemed to vanish. One century, they were dominating northern Britain. The next, their name disappears from history. No kings, no chronicles, just silence. Into that silence rushed centuries of speculation. The medieval monk Bede claimed they came from Scythia, near the Black Sea, sailing to Scotland by way of Ireland. Later, romantic historians pictured them as a lost tribe of exotic invaders who rose to power and then vanished in some great bloody war. But most of this? Guesswork. With no Pictish writing system and only scattered archaeological clues, the story had to be pieced together from outsiders, Roman generals, Irish monks, and later Scottish chroniclers, all of whom had political reasons to portray the Picts as conquered, gone, or irrelevant. And so the vanishing became legend. But the truth is, they never really disappeared at all. 
And that's one of the biggest historical misconceptions in Britain's history. Modern science is about to flip this story upside down. But before we get to the DNA bombshell, we need to see just how vast and the advanced their world really was. Forget the image of scattered tribes in wooden huts. The Picts were building on a scale few thought possible for post-Roman Britain. Take the hilltop of Tapo Noth in Aberdeenshire. Drone surveys and laser mapping have revealed the ghost of a city, over 800 stone-walled houses, home to perhaps 4,000 people. This wasn't a village. This was a mountaintop metropolis, 1,800 feet above sea level, with views stretching for miles in every direction, and the defenses even stranger. Some of Tapo Noth's massive stone walls are vitrified, the rock fused together by intense heat, as if melted in a giant kiln. We still don't know exactly how they did it. One theory, the walls were laced with timber and set ablaze either to harden them or to make a fiery statement of power. Along the coast at Berghead, archaeologists have uncovered what may be the largest Pictish fort ever built, a triple-walled naval stronghold controlling the Moray Firth. From here, fleets could launch across the North Sea or patrol the jagged northern coastline. And these weren't one-off wonders. Sites like Rhiney have turned up Mediterranean wine amphorae, imported glassware, and intricate metalwork, the calling cards of a society deeply connected to Europe's trade networks. For a people so often dismissed as barbarian, the Picts were living like medieval royalty, centuries before castles rose over the Scottish hills. And if their cities and forts impress you, wait until you see the way they fought to keep them. The Picts didn't beat Rome or their later Anglo-Saxon rivals by charging headlong into battle. They won by rewriting the rules of war. When the Romans marched into Pictish lands, they expected the same script they'd used across Europe. Crush resistance in the open, plant a garrison, claim the territory. But the Picts refused to play their part. Instead, they melted into the hills, letting the legions march across empty ground. Victorious Roman commanders would pitch camp, only to be ambushed in the dead of night. Warriors pouring from the forests, cutting them down before they could even form ranks. It was psychological warfare. Lure them in, retreat, and strike when their confidence was highest. The Picts singled out cavalry to break them away from infantry, used marshes to bog down heavy armor, and fought in such tight terrain that Rome's disciplined formations became a liability. The most famous example came at the Battle of Nectansmir in 685 AD. Northumbria, one of the most powerful kingdoms in Britain, had reduced the Picts to vassals, but King Bride MacBilly refused to submit. When King Ecfrith marched north to crush him, the Picts staged a retreat, drawing the Northumbrian cavalry into a marshland surrounded by hills. The trap snapped shut. Ecfrith was killed, his army destroyed, and Northumbria's grip on Scotland shattered forever. After victories like this, it's easy to see why the Picts were remembered as ghosts in the mist, striking from nowhere and disappearing just as fast. But their greatest vanishing act didn't happen on the battlefield. It happened in the history books. And that's where science steps in. For centuries, the disappearance of the Picts was treated like an unsolved mystery. By the 9th century, their name had vanished from chronicles, replaced by the rising Gaelic kingdom of Alba. Historians guessed at mass slaughter, cultural absorption, or even a migration back to some far-off homeland. But in 2023, researchers at the University of Aberdeen took the question to the lab. They extracted ancient DNA from Pictish burials at London Lynx and Ballantor, sequencing genetic material that had survived for over a thousand years. The results blew apart the old myths. The Picts weren't exotic invaders from the Black Sea. They weren't some lost race that appeared and disappeared without a trace. They were local, the direct descendants of Iron Age communities in Scotland, their roots stretching back centuries before Rome ever set foot on the island. Even more striking, their DNA matches most closely with people from modern Scotland, Ireland, Wales, 
in northern England. If your family tree runs through those regions and you're watching from the U.S., there's a real chance you carry Pictish DNA right now. The study also shed light on one of the longest-running debates about Pictish society. Medieval sources claim they passed power through the female line. The DNA suggests it was more nuanced. Some royal lines may have favored maternal connections, but succession likely shifted depending on politics, alliances, and the strength of a claimant's lineage. In short, the Picts didn't vanish. They became the backbone of medieval Scotland, and their legacy still lives in millions of people today. By the mid 9th century, the political map of Northern Britain was changing fast. The Picts still held much of what is now Scotland, but along the western coast, the Gaelic-speaking Scots of Dalriada were gaining power, and the shift didn't come through some single, bloody conquest. The evidence points to something far more calculated, a political merger. Around 843 AD, Kenneth MacAlpin, a man with royal blood in both the Pictish and Gaelic lines, emerged as king of a united realm. This new kingdom, called Alba, fused two cultures that had already been intermarrying, trading, and fighting alongside each other for generations. Over the next century, the Pictish language slowly gave way to Gaelic. The carved stone symbols stopped appearing, replaced by Christian crosses and Latin inscriptions. But this wasn't cultural erasure. It was transformation. Many of Scotland's traditions, place names, and political systems kept Pictish roots, even as their original meanings faded into legend. Genetically, the people themselves didn't change. The descendants of the Picts lived on as farmers, warriors, merchants, and nobles in this new Scottish kingdom. They no longer called themselves Picts, but their bloodline, skills, and influence were woven into the very foundations of medieval Scotland. This is where the vanished people of history stepped back into the light. They weren't gone. They had simply evolved, and their story didn't stop in the Middle Ages. Today, the legacy of the Picts is still there, standing in highland valleys and along windswept coasts carved in stone. Around 350 known Pictish stones survive, their symbols still sharp after more than a thousand years. Many more have been lost, broken up for building material, buried beneath farmland, or swallowed by time. In places like Aberlemio, Dice, and Rhiney, these stones rest in churchyards or beside quiet rural roads, each one a silent monument to a civilization that defied empires and shaped a nation. They are Scotland's oldest surviving family portraits, clan emblems, royal insignias, and mythical beasts whose full meanings still elude us. Thanks to modern archaeology and ancient DNA, we now know the truth. The Picts never truly disappeared. Their cities, their art, and even their blood still run through millions alive today. If your roots trace back to Scotland, Ireland, Wales, or Northern England, and you're watching this from the U.S., the face carved into one of those stones might be closer to your own than you'd ever imagine. That's the power of their story. History isn't just locked in books or behind glass. It's alive in our families, our landscapes, and our traditions. If this journey into the past made you see the present differently, share it with someone who'd be just as fascinated. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Maybe you even have a Pictish connection without knowing it. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Stone and Bone so you don't miss the next time we bring a lost civilization back to life.